couple of years ago, I went to the, uh, uh, I participated in National Geographic Explorers, uh, held at the uh, Washington DC every year around June. And the, uh, I met the, um, the explorers around the world. And one of them was the uh, Dr. Lee Berger of South Africa. He, and he's an archaeologist, and he's famous for discovering, uh, I can't really remember, the uh, sort of like a pre, a for, uh, precursor of the uh, human, um, human the, the specimens, or something, Homo lalleti, something, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. And uh, we discussed about the uh, why the exploration is important, and I uh, don't really want to say about that, but at the end of the discussion, he talked about the, uh, the leaders, especially the woman leaders. And <clears throat> this is what he said, the uh, most the daring, the most daring uh, explorers at the forefront of science are the women, uh, the women. And so, so uh, I'm so impressed and I'm so moved because the, um, I'm part of from the uh, Iowa Women's University where the, we educate the women into the uh, future leaders. And, uh, and I'm so glad to hear that statement uh, especially from him. Um, I welcome you to the uh, Wihua, Iwa Women's University. Um, and the, uh, I'm an, the, the entomologist by training, uh, the person who studies insects. So I, for the, my PhD, I worked on the uh, wax moth, which is the little moth uh, working, I was living in the beehive. I, I worked on sexual selection and uh, ultrasonic communication in the wax moth. And afterwards, I studied the uh, acoustic communication and speciation in a field cricket species. And that's been going on up until here at the uh, Iwa. Uh, but when I came to Iwa, I soon realized that the, uh, the students love animals that are cute, <laughs> furry, and the uh, floppy. So I decided to uh, study the most uh, attractive and charismatic animals in Korea, the tree frogs. <laughs> um, and soon I realized that there are two species of tree frogs in Korea. And one of them is the common tree frogs, and they are everywhere. And they sing, uh, they start to sing at the end of April through July, maybe August. Uh, and the other species is the uh, Suan tree frog species, the one on the uh, slide, and which is endangered. And these two species, the common tree frog and the uh, Suan tree frog species, are similar in appearance, ecology, and behavior. So if I uh, have these two, the uh, samples of these two species in front of you, you would have a hard time to distinguish them. But the best way to distinguish them in the field, other than the DNA, is their songs. And so here is the, uh, the swan tree frog species singing. Can you play that? These are the rice seedlings, okay, rice seedlings in the middle of the, uh, okay, that's the song. in the middle of the rice paddies. And uh, the common tree frog species typically occur at the edge of the uh, of rice paddies, the same rice paddies. Uh, which is a lot faster, like a pat, 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 
and a little lower in, in frequency. So this is the way, you know, by listening to their calls, we call advertisement calls, because the males use these, these calls to attract females for mating. So we use these advertisement calls to distinguish them uh, in, in the field. Um, and the, the swan tree frog species, again, which is the uh, endangered. Um, and I've decided to study the uh, swan tree frog species uh, I, because the, uh, I want to help them to, to conserve, okay, to uh, prolong their, their existence in, in Korea. Uh, but their numbers are, are really few because they are endangered species. Um, but, but that was in 2012, so about seven years ago. Uh, but my decision, okay, working on the uh, endangered species, it's, uh, it's uh, risky. Because the, uh, you know that the, uh, the professors at the, uh, at the major universities these days, okay, and especially I'm at the uh, stage about like uh, f four or five years before the big evaluation, okay, you know, the, the tenure or something, okay. So what I need to do during this stage is the, uh, to produce lots of lots of papers, okay. You have to publish it, okay, the, the manuscripts, the, 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 the papers. But with them, the endangered species, like a swan tree frog species, it's really difficult to write the uh, many uh, papers because I'm a behavioral ecologist, okay? They study their behaviors and ecology, especially in the field. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is that to find them, okay? To, to, to see them, to hear them, uh, sometimes to uh, experiment with them in the field. Uh, so it requires that the, uh, the n enough number of individuals in the field, but it's very difficult to do it because they are few, they are endangered. So uh, working on the, uh, the swan tree frog species is not a good decision at all <laughs> in terms of at least the, uh, producing uh, the papers. So, but that's one sense, okay? And, and, and the other way, I really want to do something on the uh, these tree frog species to uh, to help them to find out what's been uh, causing them to, to decline in numbers. So anyway, so I decided to study the, uh, uh, the swan tree frog species, but I can't do it by myself. Uh, I need some help. So I asked for the uh, Donga Science, which is the, my partner for this project, uh, to continue uh, to work together on this uh, tree frog species. So we, uh, we formed the, uh, Swan, the Swan Tree Frog Explorer uh, back in 2012. We have no, uh, you know, just like uh, the first year, we have about 80 people, okay, 80 people, and there's no, uh, you know, no formal procedures, no, no app, you know, just use the SNS, do the uh, go out, just I coordinate everybody because it's not really many, okay. So go out and, uh, and the, uh, try to find them and try to uh, monitor the activities uh, uh, around the, uh, around the uh, older countryside of, of Korea. Um, so Doha Science, that's the, uh, you know, it's a local publishing company specialized for the uh, science and science uh, education, especially for the uh, children. And the, um, this, the first year's activity uh, has been uh, great, especially in terms of the, uh, the uh, uh, publishing these, uh, uh, these papers. And this is one of the, the findings from this uh, citizen science project is this graph, this graph. And here, just want to briefly explain, uh, in the back then, we didn't know anything about the, uh, the swan tree frog species. Um, and something interesting is that the, uh, you know, when the first, the, the swan tree frog is designated as endangered in 2012, then it's just few. But 
once they designated, the number of swan tree frog species increase in number because there are more efforts to find them. So, and, but back then, I wanted to know uh, where are they, how abundant they are, uh, and especially between these, the, uh, uh, these two tree frog species. That's the common tree frog species, the uh, green, and the, uh, the red is the uh, uh, that's endangered tree frog species. And calling index, that's the, uh, it's a relative measure of abundance. So, so zero means that there's nobody in this site, okay? And the number three, okay, that's the, uh, that's a chorus. We say chorus. So there are so many of them singing at the same time, so it's difficult to count them. It means that a lot. And one, one is that the, uh, so this is the rice paddy, okay, whole rice paddy, and it's, it's, a, it's a tree frog sing, pep-pep, uh, pep, pep, okay. So I can count them, oh, here and there, okay. So that's the stage of one. And two is that there are more males of tree frogs singing. Now we start to overlap. So, pep, 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 okay, in the pep, 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 okay. Then it's a two, okay. <laughs> so, um, so that's the, uh, the, the, in the abundance, okay, of these two species. And you see here, that's the common tree frog species. And we randomly cho chose that the, uh, the sites across the, uh, the, the distributional ranges of these two, two species. And the common tree frog species are everywhere. You just go, okay? You just you chose a random. Uh, but you look at the uh, endangered species. Uh, the chorus is none, okay? And most of them, there's no, uh, most of the sites, there's no the, uh, uh, the swan tree frog species. Even if they, even if they are, it's just a few. So this graph just the, uh, sums up the how abundant these two tree frog species uh, in the uh, in the distributional ranges of the uh, swan tree frog species. And by the way, this publication turns out to be the first publication uh, purely based on data gathered from the uh, citizen science approach in Korea, I think. And <coughs> I just want to point out, okay, I just want to point out, I mean, this is, a, uh, the, the findings are relatively straightforward, simple, compared to the, uh, the research papers that they are, what I'm doing. But if I see this paper, okay, I'm so emotional. <laughs> the reason is this, okay, the numbers, okay, 0, 100, and 200, okay, that's the one and if you like to have one sample size, okay, one sample, <coughs> excuse me, one sample size, uh, the tree frogs typically occur, typically occur at the rural areas, which is the remote, okay, which is the, uh, uh, in the evening, okay, at night, so it's dark, okay. So you don't want to go there, okay. <laughs> alone, especially, with the children. Um, and the, the citizen science were typically a housewife, young housewife, with little children. So they don't really want to go there by alone. So typically, they ask their husband to come home early so they go together. Or you need to uh, team up with several neighbors together, the friends together. So typically, five people maybe less than 10 or two or three families together, okay? And there's no rice, I mean, there's one rice paddy in Seoul, but the, uh, some rice paddy in Seoul, but mostly it's the uh, outside of Seoul. So you have to travel, okay, by car at least on half an hour or, or the, uh, sometimes close to an hour, okay? And then you go there and then you get hungry. It's the children, they are hungry all the time. So <laughs> they, they eat. And then they uh, go out to the survey, okay, the survey. And then uh, it takes a, about an hour. And finish after survey, they are hungry again. So go to the, uh, some restaurant and eat again and, and, and back home, okay? So it typically requires at least several hours a night. Then they send the data to our lab, 
and the uh, graduate students in our lab listen to the, uh, the, the, the songs they, uh, they send. And most of them are, uh, I don't really want to say that, which is garbage, okay? <laughs> More than half of them, okay? More than half of them. I mean, they are, so, they are simply just excited to go out and the, uh, do the uh, survey and, and recording the songs using the cell phone. So they simply just do it, just any frog call, okay? So most of them are garbage, or most of them are noise. But, you know, you at least 30% uh, or 40% are the uh, real data that we can use, okay? So that, there's a whole procedure, okay? That's the whole procedure I've just said to you. Count only one of the sample size, okay? So this shows that you know, you look at this graph, it's a simple graph, but I can see the effort, the number of people that put into this, the, uh, uh, this, the whole uh, work uh, for this project for, uh, for that year only. So, so whenever I see this graph, I'm so uh, emotional. It's the, uh, the most em uh, emotional paper of my publication. <laughs> Um, the uh, the Swan Tree Frog Explorers uh, evolved to the Earth-loving Explorers in 2013, uh, and each year, you the number of participants double. And this year, this year you see the uh, here that's the the main auditorium of Iwa. Uh, so there are so many people, about the, uh, more than 2,500 people, participants this year alone. And the, uh, <coughs> the, at least uh, more than 1,300 people came to the uh, opening ceremony of this year. So we required one of the, uh, the biggest auditorium in Seoul. And turns out to be right here at the, uh, the, the main auditorium at, at the Ihua. And uh, also, this, the, uh, this program has the expanded to include the other, I mean, this project uh, the, uh, expanded to include other programs. For example, the, uh, the skaters, the uh, swallows, and the uh, winter wings, autongs. Uh, she, she works in our lab uh, in charge of these autongs, uh, the, the winter wings, and, and and the case people, she's from France, about the comparing the pollinator abundance between Korea and, the, uh, and, and, and France. Uh, and this, the Earth Loving Explorers, is a partnership between the uh, Donga Science uh, and the Iwa uh, Eco Science. And this is unusual in a way that. The, uh, the citizen science program is mostly uh, funded by the government grants or maintained or are the, uh, run by the uh, institution or institution related to the, uh, the, to the government. But this partnership is between a private company and the uh, academic institutions. And what I heard is that the uh, 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 tell me if, if it's not correct, okay? Um, this program is, is, is advantage, it's good and bad, okay? Uh, this project is open to the subscribers of the uh, the Tonga Science, which is good and bad, okay? And, but the number of subscribers has increased, and I heard that it's due to the, this, this, the uh, Earth Loving Explorers over the years, so they are happy. I mean, they put lots of effort into this uh, project. They, they manned for this program, and they, they also spend quite lots of the, um, uh, the money to, the, uh, to, to this, the, uh, the projects. So this is a win for them, and, I, and also this is the win for me, because the, uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm able to the, uh, conduct research uh, on these, the uh, Sweden tree frog species and other species that I wouldn't be uh, impossible without this program. Um, something 
I learned from this, the, uh, the, the running citizen science program is the important, importance of the meeting the participants in the field. Uh, we call like on-site education sessions. And, and some, the, the children, especially the young children, and they love the nature. They just want to go out, okay? If they see some advertisement like here at the magazine, they want to do it, okay? They want to do it. But they don't know how to do it. And I mean, we have the uh, procedures, okay? We have the manuals. It's all available. But, you know, running the manual is one thing, and you go out and you just do it with somebody who knows that the, uh, the, the, the program well, uh, it's a totally different thing. So I spend as many time as possible I, uh, to, to do the uh, on-site education sessions. I just, just go out there. I mean, this, this is a really simple thing. Just go out there. I explain the, uh, the app that the uh, Donga Science created for these projects and or some basic biology of the uh, species that you are working on. Uh, also the, uh, also the, the, the procedures of the, uh, the, of this, uh, the survey for, uh, for this project. And, and, and I actually go uh, work with them together and then survey them together, all together, uh, just twice or three times, and it's roughly one and a half hours. And at the end, I, you know, I ask them to do it, okay? Which is the uh, import, important for conserving the endangered tree frog species, or it is important to have what's going on in the city of Seoul, uh, the, about the, the pollinators and the, all the plants that support the pollinators. So uh, at the end, uh, what this project is about, why is it important? Just explain to them and ask for their participations. That's what the, we do the on-site uh, education session. And I think that the, this is the uh, single most important factor for the uh, successful, um, um, the, for successfully doing the citizen science project using the Earth Loving Explorers. So this is my schedule in in May and June, I, I mean, me and my students, okay? Me and my students uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in May, I mean, it's, the, 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 it's, it's so small, you don't have to read. I just simply want to stress that it's a lot, okay? So <laughs> that's a uh, uh, schedule in May. Um, <coughs> the accomplishments, okay, accomplishments, so first publication, my accomplishment using the citizen science, uh, running citizen science uh, the program. First publication based on citizen science data in, uh, in Korea. Uh, we discovered the southernmost habitat of the swan tree frog species by a citizen scientist. And when we started this program first, we didn't quite know the, uh, the whole distributional range of this endangered species. But one of the, uh, the citizen scientists, uh, he traveled an hour away from home, but couldn't find nothing. But the later, he discovered that it's a swan tree frog species right there, his hometown. Uh, turns out to be that's the southernmost uh, habitat of this species. And we published the article in, in Frog Log. Okay, Frog Log, that's the, uh, it's a newsletter of the professionals uh, yeah, professional amphibians. Uh, we featured in major news outlets over the years and published at least 24 papers in scientific journals. By the way, I got promoted to the full professor <laughs> after this. And I published the, uh, we just published the policy, policy recommendation about the amphibian conservation to the uh, Korean government and the Korean government uh, tech this, the, our our policy uh, recommendation for the uh, conservation of swan tree frog species. So, um, but most of all, most of all, back in 2012, nobody knows about the swan tree frog species. But now, uh, you talk about endangered species in Korea, 
Uh, most people think of the uh, swan tree frog species in probably less than three or four fingers. So not, swan tree frog species is probably one of the most uh, recognized endangered species in Korea. I think this is probably the best, the most important accomplishment from these student science projects. So, in sum, to summary, uh, the citizen science has been really good for the science, and citizen science is really good, especially for me. <laughs> That's my accomplishment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and now, <clears throat> um, I turn to the citizen scientists themselves, and I didn't really, you know, I, I was really thankful for them, but the, uh, didn't really want to, I mean, we became the friends, okay, we became the friends, some of them, but I didn't really ask, why do they do this, okay, why do they do the, uh, why do they spend so much their time, and so much their money, so much their effort, and, and participate in the citizen science projects. Uh, I thought that's just a fun, okay? Just, well, probably that's important, but why do they do this? Um, so, I, you know, had a chance to spend some, I mean, this question, okay, just occurred just last year, okay? But the most of the time, I didn't really thought about this question. Uh, just the last year, uh, I, I had a, uh, several opportunities to get, uh, spend more time with them. And I start to ask a question, why do they do this? So I asked, and sometimes observed, some of them over the years, and I noticed some changes, okay, some changes uh, in their attitude to the nature, attitude to the people, uh, and also their behaviors and the way they think. And some of, some of the example here, that's the Shine. Uh, I see the, uh, the, the mom is there back there. <laughs> okay. Shine, uh, okay. Shine, um, okay, this is, this is Shine and her little sister. Uh, typical little girls in, in Korea, uh, you know, watching the the animations on TV, and the following the um, you know do following the uh, you know the dancing, following the uh, you know K-pop stars, and you know sometimes they uh, they fight with each other with the, the toy sword. Okay, it, you know it's just a typical little girls. Now this is same Shine a month ago, just a month ago, uh, in a education on-site education session in one of the park in Seoul. And, and she is explaining about the, uh, the birds in this park to the uh, citizen scientist uh, come here. And I didn't really ask for her to do this. And, and Dunga Science didn't ask to do, to, uh, to do this. She just want to do it. She just want to know, she wants to explain, she wants to explain um, uh, what can you, uh, what you expect to see them in this park when you follow the, uh, all these trails here. Um, it's a Taegyu and Taegyung, they are brothers and sisters in, in 2014, not much different from uh, Shine. And now that's the uh, same two people, you see them, they, they grow now, they're bigger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, they're counting the XUVs, okay, that's the, uh, that's the XUVs, you start to see them, the, uh, the cicada XUVs, that's the uh, cast, you know, the cast, when, when they molt to the adult, they left their, or their cast behind on the trees, and using this, the, uh, the XUVs, you can, uh, you can survey this, what sort of cicada species in Korea, by the way, the skaters is the, uh, it's, a, it's a problem or the nuisance in the big cities in Korea because uh, there are so many of them, there's so much noise. So complaining about it, people cannot make sleep at night. Um, 
So one of the, our main research is that why do they, uh, we say population explosion of the cicada species. And one of the, our research in our lab is that what's the uh, main cause for the population explosion. And uh, they're doing something similar to it. And they using these cicada XUVs, they can identify them into the uh, different species, or more importantly, abundance of the cicada species uh, in, in, in the uh, area they live. Uh, this is Sujin. Uh, back in 2012, uh, she is, she has a more, I'm not quite sure, also her mom is here too. <laughs> she has an outgoing personality. Uh, and uh, she, lo I mean, she likes, she likes it out there, you know, the uh, uh, observing and, and catching some some insects. But now, she is really active. She is now, you know, ready to go anywhere. Okay, she is fully equipped. Okay, she is fully equipped, and she can, you know, at at any moment she can she can go out, go out and explore. Her. And she is also very good at drawing. And these some of the uh, her, her drawings from uh, from this, and uh, and she's a she's a I, mean, she, I think she's a great artist. At the same time, she's the uh, she's a great uh, uh, citizen scientist too. She changed so much, so much over the years, and she's more about confident and talking to the uh, people. I mean, especially in front of the class, uh, that was quite different from back in 2012. Jae Yoon, okay, uh, okay, 2013 and 2018, uh, from this, didn't change much, okay, <laughs> doing the same thing over the years. But over the years, he now has a, uh, I don't know, it's a dream, or uh, he now know what he want to do in the future. He wants to become a he wants to become an astronomer. So typically, he spend the time uh, at night, you know, watching the uh, uh, watching the tree frogs. Uh, that's what I thought. But he was interested in the uh, watching the stars at the same time. So he divided his time at night, you know, half of time watching the f uh, the frogs on the on the field, and the other half watching the stars. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this this is down. Okay, that's the down. Uh, that's the first day of the uh, the the monitoring. Okay, the the science monitoring. And the family didn't know anything about the uh, the tree frogs, so they uh, went out doing survey a month early before the, uh, the emergence of the tree frog species. So no wonder they couldn't find them. And it's also so cold, okay, in, uh, in March. So out of frustration, she, you know, she whacked the reed and... <laughs> but now, now, uh, you know, she knows exactly when and where to go to find the, uh, find the, find the tree frogs and all other species. She's, 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 uh, she can even has a technique to, uh, to lie down on, and if you put the, uh, uh, the, tree, the frogs and the lie down on, his, uh, on her, uh, the palm, and then stay there for a while. So uh, she's amazing. <laughs> all right. Um, how about their parents? Okay, see them, the children, uh, and the parents. And, you know, the parents didn't differ much from their children when they started this citizen science program. And, but the, uh, something genius about this program was that we asked for the little children to participate in the, uh, ecological survey, so you, you need to go out, okay? You need to go out in the field, which the children typically cannot do by themselves. They need help 
Okay, they need some transportation. You know, they need to find some restaurants to eat. So, the uh, the parents, okay, the parents must accompany the the children when the children want to go out doing the surveys. And I think this is something genius about this program because, <laughs> because the uh, uh, you know the the parents they they uh, they just go out. They just the uh, you know they take the children to the field. And they help, okay, because the chi you know once the the, the, the little children once they are go out they go crazy. I mean, uh, they don't exactly follow what I said, okay. They are simply interested in the uh, frogs, okay, in the uh, the insects rather than listening to me, okay. But so I, 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 I at the first I try to you know try to get the attention from the children, which is is, is almost impossible, okay. So instead, I ask their parents, okay, parents to do it, okay, parents to do it, uh, because they have cell phones, okay, you know, they can listen to me, you know, they pay attention to me, so you explain them. So they follow the, uh, uh, these, the, uh, all the procedures, and, and they do the survey uh, for their children, okay, instead of their children. And, and I, I can tell you, okay, I can tell you, uh, you just go out there, you just do it, it's fun. And you keep doing it, okay? And they just simply, you know, just fall in love with it. They just love it. So over the years, they do change it, okay? They have changed it so much, I mean, with their children. Maybe more, okay? Maybe more. They are so regular now, they love out, uh, they, are, they love out uh, exploring, the, exploring the nature and doing the surveys. And so much so that the uh, uh, that now they formed a little community, okay, and they help this project in many different ways. For example, um, you know, there's a new uh, the citizen scientist this year. Okay, they don't know anything about it, so I go out, I try to explain it, uh, but if the uh, one of those parents, okay, uh, this one of those people, they explain to the uh, new citizen scientist how to do it, where to go, okay, uh, which is much more effective, it's more, which is much more effective than, the, uh, than I do by myself, because they've been through already, okay, they know what works and what's not. So they, they help other beginning uh, studying the citizen scientist to, the, to, to do the surveys. And <clears throat> Some of them, that's the town, town and uh, her father doing the experiments. Uh, this is the uh, ditch, okay, this is the ditch. That's the con concrete ditch you can uh, easily find in the, uh, in the rice paddies of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of, of, of Korea. And this ditch, it's a sort of like a drainage, okay, along the rice paddies. What the irrigation systems uh, typically is made of there's just a soil, okay. And turns out this is the, uh, the it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a good microhabitat for the tree frogs and lots of insects. So the uh, lots of frogs they it's, it's a shelter, okay. That's the shelter. Also, this is the feeding ground for them. So the uh, maintenance I mean the uh, the, of this, the ditch is essential for their survival. But unfortunately, this, the uh, natural ditches is now converted to the uh, concrete ditch where there's no, it's, it's dry when there's no rain and there's no, uh, like uh, the grasses. So no insects, no food, no shelters. So it's really terrible. And the, uh, the biggest problem is that once you are trapped in here, okay, in the concrete ditch, many frog species cannot escape, so they die by auto hydration. So what they wanted to do is to have some slope, okay, slope on this the, uh, ditch, and so that even if they are trapped, they can climb, climb out of it. So what they are experimenting right now is the, uh, what's the, uh, you know, the highest angle, okay, they can climb out of it and for the uh, science projects. So um, many people are quite active participating in the uh, science project 
uh, not only Buddhist, the uh, Earth Loving Explorers, but the other, other venues. And um, they, I also want to emphasize that the, uh, the socializing, okay, socializing in the nature, the, um, this is, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like a, um, this, the, uh, the, it's almost a deserted house, okay, deserted house, but they rent it, and then we uh, had the, uh, some, before the, uh, the, the on-site education session, we had the, uh, this little time together, so we had a, had a dinner together. Uh, I think this is the, this, the, uh, this project and this gathering uh, give an opportunity of get, uh, gathering people together and they talk. And th this is also important that because the, not just the uh, parents and parents, but the also parents and children and children's children, they all socialize uh, for the common topic. So I think, so that's what the, uh, what the, the community going, they keep going. Uh, and they got also uh, keep their, their interest stay uh, for the citizen science together. Uh, so, so much so that the, um, this is the, everything started last year, okay? This is the, uh, again, before that, you know, it's more, our relationship between me and the citizen scientists is more like, a, you know, the teacher and children, okay? But uh, starting last year, um, we decided to do the uh, photo exhibition, okay? Photo exhibition, nature lovers photo exhibitions for, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for us. This is really for us, okay? For us. And the, um, and it was the people here, they bring out all the memories, okay? For the last, last se several years, they, they, they digging out the, the pictures to several, several years, they compare what happened on, on that day. Um, and so this exhibition has been so successful. So you see that the, uh, it's, uh, it opened uh, December 17, it ends in January 31st, but it has been, uh, it has been delayed to the <laughs> June 15th, okay? Uh, six, more, six more months or five more months, okay? Five more months. And, and we also travel together to Thailand, uh, to, to, to Taiwan, um, uh, having fun and uh, swimming with the, uh, the, sea, the sea turtles. And we also publish the book together. <laughs> That's the, you see the 26, the authors, okay, for this book, uh, everybody, okay. This is uh, like a picture and the experience and their, their story about that, about that, the, uh, about that the picture. And this is the book signing ceremony earlier, like uh, on, on April 27th. I mean, it's probably, it's probably the best time of my life, okay? You know, I thought that it's so much fun rather than me signing the book, you know, the, uh, the book alone. To, uh, all the author, not all, but the, most of the authors together, okay, to signing the books together. That's so much fun. And, um, I think the, uh, the nature, they brought everybody together. It's, uh, it's the children or the, uh, the parents, the teachers, and everybody is bring together. And we have uh, some common goal, uh, which is the, you know, we want to know what's been uh, caused for the endangered species, what's been behind the population uh, of the, uh, the cicadas. It's a little, little cause together to, to, work, to work together. I think that the people love the nature, and they want to spend time in the nature. They want to socialize in the nature, uh, and they want to do something. Okay, they want to do some in the nature. So, I think that the citizen science has been it's been great for the science. It's, gr it's, it's especially great for me. But it turns out that citizen science is one of the best way to for uh, uh, reconnecting people uh, to the nature. Okay, well thank you very much.